What's going on, everybody? So let's talk about what's going on here. This guitar, as you can see, it's all taped up with nothing exposed but the frets. Uh, you might be thinking, am I polishing them? No, I already did that. What I'm about to do is level the frets. And if you've been keeping up with this guitar, you might ask, what do you mean you gotta level the frets? You just bought this, it's a brand new guitar. And it is. However, things happen. Uh, guitars, for the most part, are made of wood. And a guitar like this is made on the completely opposite side of the planet. So it's going through a lot of changes on its journey from there to here. And, um, you know, these things can happen. So my main issue here is on the 12th and 13th frets on my E and my B string. Um, yeah, I'm getting some really bad buzz. Now, I know how to set these things up, and I know how to set them up well. Unfortunately, I'm hitting an issue, or I should say a, a problem where I cannot get the action as low as I need it or want it to be because I'm getting some buzz on different places throughout the neck. So, is it a huge deal? No, but I know it's gonna bother me the more I play this instrument, so I figured, why not just get this knocked out right now and uh, not really have to worry about it for hopefully quite a long time. Since I'm doing this, I wanted to take the opportunity to tell y'all or show y'all um, my process here. It's pretty simple, it's not very complicated, but, uh, it starts with this, taping up your guitar neck, or your guitar, I should say. Technically, you don't have to tape up your guitar neck like I did here. You can actually do this whole process without the tape, but, you know, like I said, this is a brand new guitar, and I want to avoid any type of scratching, damaging, accidental, stuff like that, that I can't. So I went ahead and I just taped it up. So these are some of the tools I'm gonna use for this process here. First off, you need some type of block, it could be a metal or whatever. I'm just using a really hard piece of maple that is completely flat. I cannot stress how important it is that it's completely flat. This is about a, I don't know, six inch block, something like that. Um, now, I'm going to use this double-sided tape on this block, and I'll be doing this type of motion here up and down the frets, nice and evenly. And that's what's gonna take material off. Once I have the material off, and I should have stated this before, I'm gonna use a couple different grits. What did I grab here? I have 220, 400, and 600. I'm probably gonna skip the 220 um, and start with 400 and go from there. But you know, we'll, we'll see as the process goes along. If, if I need to modify that. Um, so yeah, everything's sanded off. And after the frets are leveled, we need to crown them. And that is what I have my uh, Stumac crowning file here. Another tool that I haven't decided if I'm going to use or not yet is this uh, fret edge tool, again from Stumac. And this is just a big piece of phenolic plastic with a, uh, with a file fixed to a, a certain angle here, and you run this up and down the fret edges. I will say the fret edges on these frets are really good. I don't have any problems with them. They're completely smooth. No complaints from me, so I'm likely going to skip this step. Honestly, the only tools I'll, you'll be needing to do this whole process other than, again, four odd steel wool, four zeros. That's gonna be for the final polish. Now there's a couple tools that I do have that are important for checking and setting this all up. So once you get your strings off, your neck is going to absolutely need adjusting. Um, you're gonna to wanna to get the neck as straight as possible before you start leveling. Um, the concept here being that once the neck is straight and leveled, once the strings are put back on and you adjust your truss rod again and everything's straight, then it'll be good to go. So what I have here is a notch straight edge, place it on the fretboard and uh, you know make sure it doesn't rock back and forth. If it's rocking back and forth, there's too much bow in the neck, up bow, I should say. And if there is uh, no rocking, 
but there's some space underneath that means you have too much down bow and you have to adjust accordingly it's pretty straightforward guys you uh you adjust your truss rod until it's straight with the straight edge and the only other tool here is this guy right here it's called a fret rocker and it's got different lengths because as you go up and down your neck you're trying to rock between frets here so as you can see i'm just moving up and down the neck i'm not hearing anything as i rock between three frets at a time getting a little something there but let's go to the problem area and i'll show you how bad the rocking is i don't know how well that's coming off on the camera but it's bad so without further ado Let's just get into it and uh, start sanding away at this thing. All right, y'all, I also should have mentioned this tool right here. This is just a neck cradle from Stumac. Just a piece of wood with some cork. This is gonna help me support the neck for this process here. You gotta be very careful not to push down. You don't wanna put too much pressure. Let the, the weight of the block and the sandpaper just kinda do the work. So let's get some uh, double-sided tape on here. And you want to apply the tape evenly because you don't want Because like I stated before, you really want your surface as flat as possible. Alright, fucking this up. And hopefully you can get away with just two pieces of tape. Yep, that looks good. Nice. Tape should be reusable, luckily. And this is just uh, double-sided Gorilla Tape. Feel free to use whatever double-sided tape you want. The best thing to use is, I think 3M makes it. It's adhesive sandpaper, but it's not cheap. It's like 40 bucks a roll. So, as much as I would love to have that, I really can't justify spending that money on something that I just don't do that often. And if you're not a full-time guitar tech, you probably don't want to do that either. All right, so let's grab the, the 400. See how that sits on there. And like I said before, I'm going to cut the excess. I want a nice, flat, even block. Boom, check it out. Just like that, guys, you have yourself a nice flat sanding block. If you want to spend the big bucks on the big aluminum ones, go for it, do your thing, but this works just fine for me. And it'll work just fine for you. Really only one more step here, and that is to mark my frets. I'm gonna use a red Sharpie and just run them up and down each fret. And the reason you're putting the Sharpie on here because we want to keep track of which frets are being affected by the sandpaper and by running our block up and down. What you'll see is anywhere that there is a dip or a flat fret, flat spot, whatever you want to call it, the Sharpie will still be there. I'm doing a comedically terrible job at a simple task. <laughs> but that's why I use tape, <laughs> guys, because, you know, I just, I just be goofing. I'm just a goofy guy. All right, I'm almost done here.
making sure that we're really covering the complete top of the frets here. So it defeats the purpose if you're not actually able to track what you're doing. looks good to me and again like I said before I'm just going to place the block on the frets here I'm gonna go back and forth a couple of times up and down the fretboard and I'm gonna pull the camera down so you can see a little bit closer of where the problem areas are All right, let's take a look. Okay, I'll be honest, the reflections make it kind of hard to see here, but if I zoom in close, there we go. This is our first fret. You can see where the Sharpie was, and there's a nice even line, right? So that's really all we want is a nice even line and all I used was 400 grit, but what we should find here eventually, there we go, spots like this. See how the, the fret to the left and the right have nice flat areas and then there's this spot where there's still some Sharpie there? It might not seem like a big deal, but honestly guys, that small difference can cause fret buzzing and can be the difference from a pro setup to an average setup. So I'm watching this in real time with you guys here on my phone. And see, now we're in the problem area. I bet you that's the 12th fret. Let me check here. Yep. So, but you can tell that it's not terrible. It's by no means terrible. But it could be better. Let's check our high frets here. Yeah. Yeah, these guys are not even touched, barely even touched by the sandpaper. So let's keep going. Right, getting closer for sure. Now the way you can really check your progress here is by basically getting eye level with each fret. And if you have a nice, straight, even line going down each fret, then you know you're good to go. And we're very, very close here. I'm gonna make a note of which frets are the high spots because it's hard to tell with the tape on there. But I do want to talk about that later. Just marking the tape. Okay. Oh, we good. <clears throat> okay, we're good all the way up until this this fucking guy right here whatever this fret is it's quite a bit lower not too low i think i'll be all right but that's that's the biggest that fret's a bigger issue than the other one you get two sharpie marks
95% there. All right, let's take a look. So, lines going straight all the way down. Let me show you the, the problem fret I'm talking about here. So this is the 20th fret, and I just finally broke through. The reason I'm stopping here is I don't wanna remove any more material from the frets. It's not that I'm removing a ton, but I am keeping in mind that I'm gonna to have to level these frets again in the future and I am going to be playing this guitar heavily so it's at a point where I'm good with it it's much better than when we started so now to crown the frets so I'm going to be honest this process takes a very long time if you're wanting to do it right essentially what you're going to do is harder to explain than it is to show in person but you're going to take your crown you're going to take your file in one direction at a time, going all the way along your fret. And you'll see that the line in the middle starts to get smaller and smaller and smaller as your fret gets rounder and rounder and rounder. Now, I just did this one fret. It took me about, I don't know, seven to eight minutes. Now I got to do 23 more. Let's go. All right, I don't know how long that took, but we're done. Frets are crowned. You can tell, again, pretty much impossible to show this on camera, but see how there's no line going down the middle. Let me see if there's a spot that I might have missed, a little spot that I can kind of show you what I'm talking about. No. I can't show you what I mean because I got everything. So anyway, they're, they're all crowned. Now, time to polish them with the steel wool. And that's like basically it, guys. It's super simple. That, my friends, is a perfectly leveled and polished fretboard. You can see all the way down, zero imperfections. Absolutely beautiful. All right, cool. So. I'm going to clean up this absolute mess. And then let's get this thing strung back up.
damn, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I thought I was recording. I was talking to the phone the whole time, but it turns out my phone died. So the guitar is put back together and everything luckily went great. Went amazing. This is something that's again, really hard to convey over video because you have to have the guitar in your hands to really know what a very well set up instrument feels like. But essentially across the neck, I can feel the action is lower and more even. Um, I was able to just really straighten things out and get it nice and locked in. The issue I was having with the 12th and 13th fret on the E and B string is gone completely. You can hear just by me playing and ringing these out. Now I do have the action set super, super low, so there's just a tad bit of buzz. But uh, other than that, everything's sounding amazing. And all the way up until even the 24th fret, got a little buzz right there. But again, those strings are, the action's pretty low, so. But you know, everything's working great, sounding great. So I hope you guys learned a couple things on this video. I'm definitely gonna cover how to set up a Floyd from beginning to end in another video. But uh, yeah, if you've ever wanted to take on fretwork and you're like scared of it, just don't be. Guys, they're just metal. It's just metal and wood. There's nothing to be afraid of. Um, that being said, if you don't trust yourself, always go to a professional. But I'm a big proponent of trusting yourself and learning new skills. There's nothing wrong with that. So until next time, guys, stay safe, stay blessed. Have a great day.